Good afternoon. Welcome to the Sandstone series. Presentation skills is the first of a series of presentations designed to help you guys pick up skills acquisition in those soft skill areas on the peripheries of what you do on a daily basis. When we talk about presentation, the first question we have to ask ourselves is what is a presentation? I suspect all of you watching this video clip have been subject to PowerPoint slide 142 with a presenter talking to you about inspiration, motivation and leadership. Probably with a slide with so many words on it, you can't read any of it at all. Well, that may be the traditional form of presentation. Every single time you walk into a room, send an email, introduce yourself, put a presentation together or answer the phone, you are in reality presenting. In all of your presentation, to be really effective, it's vital that it's authentic. Every form of presentation that you deliver, every time you speak, everything you wear and everything you do must be authentic to the messaging it is that you're trying to deliver. Therefore, your email must reflect your presentation style. Your introduction at network meetings must be in a similar style and manner to that of the message that you're trying to deliver. Think about a PowerPoint presentation that you may have delivered recently or any other form of formal presentation. I'd like you to ask yourself, why am I doing this presentation? Do that now. I'm prepared to wager that the answer you came up with was at least a paragraph long, fairly waffly, and probably involved an awful lot of adjectives. I want you to think about using just one word. When you put a presentation together, you should be able to ask yourself the question, why am I doing this presentation? And the answer should be one word, to motivate, to inspire, to educate, to inform. Once you've answered the question and you've come up with your one word as a purpose for why you're giving this presentation, what I want you to do is go back through that presentation. Look at every slide, every email, every soundbite you're about to give and ask yourself, does that contribute or support the one word that I've selected for my presentation? Let's use inspiration as an example. Go back through your presentation and ask yourself, does every single slide in my presentation somehow support the theme inspiration? Do pie graphs inspire you? If not, get rid of them. Does your message clear and concise and therefore inspirational? If not, get rid of it or clean it up. Every single aspect of your presentation must reflect or support that one word. Once you've really understood the outcome the purpose for giving the presentation in the first place. Then put yourself in the shoes of the people who are going to be watching or listening to your presentation. Almost sit at the desk. Go through the presentation and ask yourself, what have I physically learned or got out of this particular presentation? If it matches up with the outcomes that you desire from the presentation, and if the whole presentation ties together with a single word, then the chances are that that presentation is going to be impactful, purposeful, and interesting to watch for the audience. What media am I using to deliver it? Am I using videos, PowerPoint, Keynote, Prezi, or Adobe Spark? What venue am I actually using to deliver my presentation? Does the venue and location support the message I'm trying to deliver? If I'm after a quiet, confident, relaxed environment, is the location that my delegates are sitting in achieving that? If I need a more dynamic, formal environment is the venue that I'm using dynamic and formal. Ask yourself these questions and where possible use the venue to support the message and presentation that you're trying to deliver. So if the purpose of your presentation is inspirational motivation then maybe you could select a venue something like this. The venue adds to the message that you're trying to deliver and makes the whole thing just a little bit more authentic. So, there's nothing worse than a nervous presenter flapping his notes all over the place. All of a sudden, what happens is the audience are watching the notes in the paper rather than listening to the message that's being delivered. That's not to say you can't use notes, but simply think about the way you're going to use them. There's nothing wrong with A4 or A5 postcards, stiff card that won't flap as you vibrate, 
or actually simply put them on a lectern or a desk in front of you and come back to them. But make sure you rehearse with them. This is equally frustrating for the audience. So use bullet points, strip it out, write bigger letters and highlight keywords if that's what you need to do. Remember, the only person in the audience that knows you've missed a key point is you. So if you're using your notes and you put them away and you come back and you suddenly can't find your place, don't panic. Nobody knows you've missed anything out other than you. Think about your overall message, think about the reason you're delivering the presentation and stay on that theme. Any keynotes or key points can always be swept up afterwards. The way you dress and the way you appear should support all of that messaging. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be smart. What you need to be is appropriate. It doesn't have to be smart, it has to be appropriate. What message are you trying to transmit? What reaction do you want from your audience? And what outcomes must they take away from the presentation? Therefore, depending on the environment you're stood in, make sure you're dressed appropriately as to the message in the presentation. It's very common for presenters, when they're presenting, to have some form of tick or movement that they don't realise they're doing. Therefore, be conscious of your body, conscious of your movement, and if needs be, anchor yourself to a chair or a desk in order to hold that still. If you are somebody that finds yourself having involuntary movements, daft as that sounds, then create movement, and you're, what you'll find is that the shaking or the nerves will go away. For example, I'm a nervous presenter, enter the screen or the audience or the auditorium from behind, walk up to the audience in a confident manner, and as you come forward with the audience behind you, introduce yourself. What you will find is the act of walking in between the chairs relieves those initial nerves, calms your voice, and gives you a little gravitas with the audience. If you find yourself moving around, then actually nothing wrong with picking two or three points and moving to those specific points. I'm going to address the audience over here, and I'm going to come and address the audience over here. Hand movements and gestures are good. Positive controlling movements give a sense of confidence and keep the audience on their toes. We've already spoken about selecting a venue that adds to the presentation that you're trying to give and the confidence that goes with that. Remember, if you're going to choose a location that's not normal to you or not within your comfort zone, rehearse, practice, make sure you've got the right equipment and make sure the whole thing comes together to create that presentation. In conclusion to this short presentation, whilst the very best presenters in the world have a degree of natural talent, giving an effective presentation is a step-by-step -step process that anybody can be good at. Fundamentally, follow the steps as we've described them so far. Ask yourself in one word, why? What is the purpose for this presentation? Ask yourself, what is the outcome that my delegates must get out of this presentation? Ask yourself whether everything you're delivering is supporting that message. That includes the venue, the actual overall location, the materials and the media that you're using, and of course, the way that you've turned yourself out, is it appropriate, remember? It might be appropriate to be smart, but it doesn't mean smart. It means, is it supporting the messaging that you're delivering? Follow that process, take it to the end, and then start again. Take some time out, come back, go back through the presentation and ask yourself those same questions. A word to the wise when writing content for your presentations. Be careful of humour. Humour can be fantastic and can be a really good way to bring a presentation alive, but just be careful. Doing what we do for a living at Sandstone Communications, we are regularly asked for help with friends' speeches for weddings, best man's speeches, retirement speeches, etc. And as I always say to everybody, at the point at which you're asking somebody if this is okay, it isn't.